Hello everyone and happy Friday. Today I have a nice little video on turned parts and creating them and sketching them. So I believe that when you are going to design something, especially a turned part, it's really nice to have a hand sketch. And the hand sketch is something that you can put all your dimensions on and your tolerances even, and you should be able to um, go pretty quickly once you have the hand sketch. So it's really nice, I think, to start with that. Uh, so a turn part, um, as you can see, I'm designing this little trailer and um, there's turn parts that are required. Uh, so I'm going to show you a nice little trick um, that I think is really great when you're designing a turned part. And that is what I want to do is I want to put the dimension in the dimensions in as diameters, not half radiuses. And so the first thing I'm going to do is go to File, uh, Utilities, Early Access Feature, and make sure I have the brand new Sketcher. I'm going to turn that on like this. Um, this is um, NX2406, so I can use either one, which is good. So I'm going to go into the Sketcher and I'm going to select the plane, just like this. And I'm going to put in uh, a profile. Now my profile is going to be revolved and so it looks like this, this, that. That is my profile and that's all I'm going to use. Now the very first dimension I want to put in is a dimension from here to here. Actually it would be here to this imaginary line over here which would be 10 millimeters. And so I'm going to hit the D key. I like to put uh, dimensions in with expressions so I'm going to make sure that that's on D key and I'm going to go from this um, center line to this point out here and I'm going to click it and I'm going to put in 5 for now but I really want that to be 10 so that's going to scale everything okay I'm going to close it and now here's the fun part I'm going to right click on this and say convert to half diameter look at that so now it says that out to here is exactly 10 um, inches. Uh, it's a 10 inch diameter now rather than a 5 inch radius. I'll do it again. I'm going to put a dimension here and put a dimension here. And those are the three diameters that I want. And so again, I'm going to click on here and say convert to half, di half, half diameter convert to half diameter. Okay. So what now I want to do here is make sure that the diameter of this portion of this revolved part is um, four inches plus or minus 0 0.01. And so I'm also going to go to settings and in settings, I'm going to click on the tolerance and I'm going to say that there shall be a bilateral tolerance just like this. And I'm going to put in 0 0.01 just like that. And this is supposed to be exactly four. So I'm going to put the four in there. So it's a four inch diameter plus or minus 0 0.01. That's really easy. Let's keep going. Um, this dimension right here wants to be exactly one, but it also wants to have a tolerance of uh, uh, 20 thousandths. So I'm going to say uh, settings click on tolerance, put on a bilateral tolerance. No, I'm sorry, a equal bilateral tolerance. And I'm going to put in 0 0.02. Cool. So as you can see, it's very easy for me to um, dimension these things and really capture the diameters as diameters. This one wants to be a um, two inch diameter. So oops, Oh boy, Control Z. Thank goodness for Control Z, right? I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to use this one, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to say, oh, I already I already converted this one. Silly me. Um, so this one is um, exactly two. There's no tolerance on here. Do that. And let's see, what else do we have? We've got a dimension 
from there to there, and that's supposed to be 9. I'll put 9 in here. It's a lot taller than I've drawn it in, the, in my hand sketch, 9. Uh, and this is 9 with a tolerance of point oh one okay so you get the picture okay so now I've got to clean this up a bit so I'm gonna take this little line segment and put it up like that I'm gonna grab this guy and put him up like this I'm gonna go into the dimension tool and I'm going to put my 45 degrees in from there to there is 45 from uh, here to here is 20 and um, I think I've basically captured everything now good and so now I can say finish when I finish I can just do a revolve and the revolve uh, by default is going to go around that y-axis like that and say OK now <clears throat> you'll notice that um, this shaft has a groove in it and I did not put that in the sketch and I did that on purpose because uh, a better way to do the groove is with the actual groove command. Um, I can't resist. It's so groovy. <laughs> I know it's a dad joke. Um, to do the groove, I well, let's back up. There's three types of groove. There's a rectangular ball and a new groove. The rectangular, of course, has the uh, rectangular cross section. And so I'm going to select the approximate location where I want the groove. My groove diameter is 1.9. So there's 1.9 there. My groove width is 0.125. And I say OK, and I get a donut. And then the donut is asking me, where do I want this donut? And it's 2.5 inches from here to there. That's 2.5. And as soon as I say OK, it does the groove. There we go. Um, next, I've got a hole pattern um, on this piece of geometry. And what I'm going to do is sketch a circle, a concentric circle, like so. Oops, there we go. Concentric circle. Let's make sure that it is at, it's indeed concentric. So I'm going to select the center point and make sure he's right on top of there. Had I selected a little bit more carefully, it would have done that on per uh, right away. And that circle is going to be a reference line. And now I'm going to place my dimension on that circle. Um, this calls for a 7-inch uh, diameter on the circle. So there we go. I'm going to now place a point right there. Right there. And I'm going to go into my constraints, and I'm going to make sure that they are persistent. I like persistent constraints. It's my, just my preference. And I'm going to say, make coincident. And I'm going to grab this little point, and I'm going to put it on that curve like that. And I'm going to grab the little point, and I'm going to put it on this curve like, like that. And so that is the location of the hole that I'm going to use. So here's my hole command. And my hole command is going to receive a cylindrical hole that is 0.75 and through. So there's 0.75 uh, diameter. 0.75. Right. Right. There. Okay, that does not look like 0.75. There we go. And we want it to do a... Um, through body. So we're going to do that. So good. And now finally, there's um, uh, there's eight of these. Okay, so the uh, pattern feature is so simple to use. You basically select the feature that you want to pattern. You could select it from there as well. You select an axis. Now, if you use one of these blue axes, you're going to have to specify the axis and a point where that axis applies. But if you select a datum axis, then that is um, a little bit more specified. 
I want count and span. I want eight of these in a span of 360 degrees. And I say, okay. Cool. Um, to finish this off, um, in order to do the little spliny thing in the, uh, in the top, I'll just do, for example, I might want to do something that looks like this. Okay. I might want to give it a, dim um, a dimension from here to here. Close enough. From there to there. I want to dimension it there. I want to dimension an angle, but first I'm going to put a midpoint constraint. So this one is going to be lined up with that little point in terms of its middle, its center. I'm going to do it again from there to there. Say OK. And then finally, a nice little angle on there. Let's say 40 degrees. Cool, cool, cool. And then, oh shoot, what happened? I was on the wrong circle. Um, let's go back to that sketch. So it should have been here. <laughs> so let's pull this down like this. It's nice that the new sketcher allows you to grab these um, arrows and pull them like that. That is a very nice advantage. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, subtract. Now this is supposed to go in by 1.75. So that's minus 1.75 with a subtract. And then finally, a pattern feature again. There's my feature. I'm going to specify. This time I'm going to use the blue arrow just to show you that when I use the blue arrow, it also wants a specific point, which will be the center there. Um, I'm going to have eight of these as well. And there you have it my whole shaft is now defined and I might want to go and do this. I might want to go into the sketch and select these dimensions and say convert to or display as PMI. So now the shaft is dimensioned. It's even got my tolerances on it. And uh, now I don't do a drawing, I just uh, publish this instead of, um, you know, what I would normally do with the, normally, you know, to create a, uh, to manufacture something. A lot of folks send out a step file and a 2D drawing. Um, these days, uh, not so much. These days you want to send out a published uh, 3D PDF or a JT file, and it's got the dimensions on it. Um, if the person who you're sending it to does not have NX, they should be able to um, use JT to go, uh, which is a free software. Or um, uh, in their software, there's probably a step four, 242 uh, protocol, and then they can um, you can give them a step file with these dimensions. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my little uh, technique there. Uh, again, my name is Steve Samuel. Uh, my company is Design Visionaries. I absolutely love to share what I know. We do a heck of a lot of training here. You could call us for training, books, etc. Uh, please like and subscribe and help us increase the value of the channel and um, you know, help us justify creating it. Uh, we love your comments. Uh, please comment. Please uh, do what you can to support us. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend.